Oh, uh, how do I start? As my topic says, some issues and uh, questions regarding open, Afri open access in Africa. I will commence with the first point, which actually is that of uh, trying to recast the open access issue. We all know what we said is all about and those of other things. But uh, having done, done all of this, uh, what am I trying to quickly look at? Uh, the questions, I'm actually raising a lot of questions this morning. Some of them have been asked. Some of them may not have been asked. Some of them you've asked yourself. Some of them you've discussed with others. But the questions, I think, are fundamental, and uh, we should uh, get to look at them. Uh, as I said, they're not exhaustive, so you may have some more than I do. Please, you're welcome. I would like to say that uh, what Eve just said about the discussion should not be what she has to beg us to do. We should all be there. And for the intellectual property, we should have seven million, not 250. We should sign as much as possible, encourage others to do so. And some of those issues we're looking at. Also, is to instigate answers to some basic questions that may arise to help drive the open access in the right part in Africa. And uh, the questions are both personal and they are general. Uh, I got this from uh, Science Dev, and uh, uh, Dixon was writing. Uh, he says, uh, the momentum of open access is unstoppable, and the global science community must manage change to ensure poorer regions are not left out. That's my concern, being left out. Now, uh, one of my colleagues, somebody said yesterday that we have leapfrog into the open after uh, inadvertently, I suppose. But uh, as we all know, we may have leapfrog, but the bushes are not clear. So we need to be able to look back or we'll be lost again as we have been over several other things that have come to Africa. Poor funding, one of the major issues we have. As I say, they have the dollars, we have the coin. And in your everyday economics, you know where the coins play, you know where the notes play. Mm. Now, a lot of questions I will raise. One, are there funds for open access in the African context? Should funding open access program or project be the target, or should funding research be the target? How do we achieve improved funding? How do we ensure the end users actually engage these funds? We must not forget the African context. A lot of fun may come, but how many gets to the end user? And even when they get to them, how are they used? In a situation where people write research proposals, uh, I submitted the research proposal once to a body, and they asked me to remove the uh, conference attendance and publication. And I actually withdrew that proposal because it made no sense. So how do you fund such a thing? How do we use the existing funds better? It's not that there are no funds at all. There are some. Inaccessibility and poor dissemination of information is another issue that arises. Now, accessibility. What is truly access? How open is the access to us in Africa? When I raise these questions, the spectrum of consideration it's quite wide. Are the means there to achieve accessibility? Does availability imply accessibility? I don't think so. How do we improve accessibility by Africans? How many are aware of open access in Africa? In one of my studies last year, you will be a appalled at how many people are aware of open access and what they even think of open access anyway. What are the places to ensure, what are in place to ensure good level of 
awareness. Because if came in talking about the other property that and one or two other things, they have 250 signatories. People are not aware. You don't engage what you're not aware of. Inaction on relevant information. For me, this is one of the biggest problem that the first the African uh, researcher or contributor. It's not that sometimes we don't get to know one or two things. But for reasons I really, I really can't uh, lay my hands on, which I think we should be thinking, which we are part of that, is that even when we get a few things, we know a few things, we just don't take the next step to engage them, whether for personal or for general interest, anyway. Well, yesterday again we spoke about the 80s, 90s decline in, uh, in uh, sponsorship of uh, tertiary education. And I somehow, growth within the years of inability to participate in most platforms has probably drawn us into that uh, cocoon. We have become lethargic. On certain attitude of waiting on others to hand out, we've always been consumers. And it's become a, a way of life for us in Africa. We just consume, others generate. And then lack of understanding of uh, open access. How do we motivate the African researcher positively? There is motivation. I think it's on the negative side. Motivated to sit and wait. How do we motivate to do, not receive? Uh, as a Christian, my Bible tells me that it is better to give than to receive. In hindsight, I think it's actually correct. What means should we adopt to motivate ourselves? Other issue, poor understanding of open access issues. Probably the most revealing is the fact that African said I don't really understand the open access issue. What it entails and what is leading us. Does open access publishing translate into free publishing, free access to published material? Is it both? Let's eat out of them. Most government, uh, from yesterday to now, UNESCO, World Bank, EU, UK, every person in the, every government in the north is popping up something to get on the bandwagon of open access. What is the African, what is the AU or the individual government doing? What about regional bodies, ECOWAS, SADC, or the host, the host of them. What are they doing? Is there a single statement from any of them? I doubt. Let's take Nigeria for example. Nigeria University Commission, the body that runs the uh, university in Nigeria, has a, an open access policy, in quote. But uh, amazingly, only of the 124 universities that it coordinates, only four are on the open access platform. Now those who I think, uh, I don't know how many are really active. And, uh, why I was trying to get ready for this conference, I did try to reach them. I will tell you that, well, like a brick wall, as if I wanted to steal something from them, rather than help out. How, how do we get our government and institution to embrace open access in a productive way? Because it's not that sometimes some of these things don't get to be done, but the truth is that most of the time when our government gets like intellectual property now. They get on board, they turn into something else. Somebody sees that somewhere coin something from them and they just adopt it and push it down our throat. And we're we are expected to just follow on. How do we foster cross-border relationship at various levels to promote open access in Nigeria? I consider my coming to Zarika, I would say it's really, really on the low side. Poor commitment by publishers and institutions. How committed, how committed are the players in the open access arena? There's a lot of talk. Do institutions see open access as a platform for improving the research base and information access of their researcher? Another route to high score. In a world 
leading with score. It is a ranking crazy system. Whether impact factor, web ranking, this one ranking, world class ranking, all manner of ranking and rating. Everybody's running one way or the other to be ranked. Rank whether high first word, second word, third word, last word, word bank ranking, all manner of ranking. In this rank crazy system, what is in decisions uh, drive? What are they seeking? What are they looking for? Are we researchers and contributors? Are we just things to be used again to get high ranking? Not bothering whether we're benefiting or the system is benefiting. Do open access publishers mean what they say? What does open access really mean to the publisher anyway? A lot of questions. What are the big and regional doing to ensure open access success or failure? BMC is here. What about other bigger journals or big journals in court? Where, where are they? What are they doing? What are they doing to ensure that? Because they are the big and the rich ones. They are the APC's journals. What are they doing to ensure the success of, or well, I would rather, or again, the failure of open access? Because if it's not benefiting them, will it succeed or will it, will it fail? African journals, African researchers. How will open access affect the African, African journals? If the visibility of the poorer journals in Africa already starve or form decreases, will it not mean a closure? Will it not just fold up? Will it not escalate an already worrisome dependency of non-African journals by... We depend on non-African journals for high ranking. Uh, if you have 100% uh, supposed non-African journals, then you are international. You are world class. Now, how will the African journals, therefore, with open access again, we are... Uh, uh, because again, in this in this class, I, uh, I consider the issue of removal of uh, subscription or APCs or whatever we want to call them, the fund part, of, the financial part of it. If it's removed, and the rich and big journals remove APC, where will the African journal be? What does this mean for the African researcher? Open access, the place of big journals, African journals, the struggle. Will it translate to improved publication and access for him, really? Will it not be segregated? How many times have you sent papers out? Uh, when uh, uh, IKDM was still out, available. I sent a paper there once with a team and uh, the man wrote back that, they wrote me back that um, it was, uh, they did not see it important to add to their publication. I took six of their publications of what I consider were not worth enough and sent it back to them and told them I was nothing but a racist stan to ensure that I wasn't uh, The director of the place kept sending me letters after letters after letters on why I should send the paper back. I said, I'm not going to publish with you anymore. He had, they, went up, they went ahead to publish the paper without any review from mine, just probably to, and I said, what those contributors from six uh, editions contributed, I don't see how they better out than what we have. So, are we going to be well, will open access ever truly translate to free? Actually, you talk to most people about open access, that's where their concern is. They want, how can we publish without spending so much money? I, uh, let me say this, I have a paper with BMC, and they said I should pay $1,850. I mean, that's a lot of money in my end. And, uh, you know, well, I'll come to that. Because all of a sudden, Nigeria has jumped out of the low-income uh, countries to a little higher, which does not translate to my pocket. Anyway, mm -hmm. or to other people. Huh? And, uh, and then the next thing they wrote me under that shoe, they'll give me a waiver. I said, okay, nice, good. 
and they said eight hundred and fifty dollars. So eight hundred and fifty dollars for one paper. Then I probably have to send Nigeria to make more than ten people. But I'm not blaming them anyway. If an author cannot pay the APCs demanded by open access journals, how contributory productive can he be? I will not go to remain consumers. Directory of Open Access Journal. That big hub. Does the number of journals on the directory actually reflect the level of free and open access? How has the, has the open access movement truly improved the publishing condition access of the African researcher? How practicable is the auto pay model of open access? How realistic is the standard fee demanded by most open access journals? International local journal complex. The impact factor, webometry. Now, this is another, this is where the real issues are coming in. Will open access not widen the international local journal divide, which I've already tried to point out? Would it not further, further improve the local journal by starving them of quality submissions? The BMC and uh, maybe one uh, African journal of parasitology uh, to struggle for quality paper. Where would the publish, where would the author rather send it? If uh, only just post graduate students are the ones that send papers to African journals and their bosses and seniors are sending to the international journals, where will the African journal ever get to a grade? We open as a big we open as a become a major index in impact factor and webometric ranking. How will African journal institutions catch up? My concluding thoughts, <coughs> as I've just come to ask you a lot of questions this morning, and I hope we're going to, it's going to be part of our discourse, both here and beyond. The question really is, what con concrete action are there by African government to handle the open access issue? If our community South Africa is anything to go by, we need a lot, we need to do a lot. Our 32 people wanted to come here. Surely six, about five or five of us finally made it. And that's after some serious protests from my end. I had to write the, the agency that receives the submission for South African Embassy. I wrote the South African Ambassador, his Deputy Ambassador the secretary in charge of uh, immigration in Lagos, the one in Abuja. I wrote uh, the, the, the Nigerian ambassador in South Africa. And then uh, my people were so unsure we were coming that even when they opened the gate for us, they were not prepared because it came in just too late. We got in there, a lot of rules were coming up from nowhere. And I said, these rules were not there. How does BMC intend to circumvent the unrealistic World Bank ranking? It's unrealistic to me because I don't know how. Even South Africa. Uh, I don't know if, you, if every person in UTC have to publish in some BMC journal and they're going to charge $1,850. You read that, really that rich to, to, to cope with that? Maybe you are. I don't know. So BMC is on board pushing the open access initiative in Africa. What really do they have to offer with the issue of their foundational membership? Because I was pushing it with, I was uh, working with Osla for my institution. And all of a sudden, there was no more communication. The next time she wrote me, she said, well, we cannot continue because you are suddenly moved from the low-income countries to a little higher one. And so because of that, I said, well, it's not your, it's not BMC's fault. I said, but I wrote this, and the mail I wrote, I said, but you know that that does not, the World Bank ranking has nothing to do with the man that walks on the street. So BMC be on board already. What would they do? 
what is the African open access agenda really? Are we just running because others are, others are running? Or we have a clear cut agenda? What do we intend to achieve? How do we go from this conference with concrete ways of improving open access interaction? Or that we announced we should get involved in it. How committed is everyone present to the open access school? I don't intend anybody to ask me any questions this morning. <laughs> I have asked you other questions. And the last point really is about you. So all that on board, all that are sitting, all that are here, how committed are we? What do we really want to do? Is this just another conference? I came, they gave me a name tag. I wrote my name down. They will send me an email to post it on the wall. How committed are we? Thank you.